I'm glad you are all available to meet this afternoon. Now that our services contract has been awarded, I wanted to get everyone together to discuss the need to conduct a post-award conference and cover the arrangements and procedures to ensure the conference runs smoothly. Sometimes, especially for recurring services with the same contractor, we have opted to send out a post-award conference letter instead of conducting a more formal conference. However, since this contractor is new to this site, and some of you are new to your positions, I think it's best to go ahead with a formal conference. Jack, I thought the government is required to conduct a post-award conference. Actually, the government is not required to conduct a post-award conference, or even send out a post-award orientation letter for that matter. The purpose of a conference or letter is to ensure everyone involved has a clear and mutual understanding of the contract's requirements, as well as key players' duties and responsibilities, and so forth. Subpart 42.5 of the FAR covers considerations the contracting officer should take when deciding whether a post-award orientation is necessary and, if so, the method and content to be covered. It also covers documenting this post-award orientation in the contract file. Personally, since I'm new to contracting and have never attended a post-award conference, I think conducting a formal conference is a great idea. I think it's a good idea, too. This is a great opportunity to clarify some of the administrative duties that the COR will be responsible for and what the proper procedures will be for executing those tasks. It's also a chance to remind the contractor of some recurring issues with contracted data submittals that need to be addressed prior to the first required delivery. Jack, like you said earlier, I want to make sure the contractor and government have a mutual understanding of the various requirements up front and everyone understands the roles and responsibilities of all the key players. Therefore, I'm more in favor of a formal conference rather than simply sending out a letter. It will also allow the government to personally meet the contractor's key staff. I know it always helps me to put a face to the name. Jack, who typically attends the post-award conference? The attendees are typically determined by the purpose and size of the requirement. At a minimum, the contractor, the contracting officer, and the customer attend typically the program manager or other representatives of the requiring activity. If applicable, the administrative contracting officer, the contract specialist, the contracting officer's representative, or COR, such as Pat, the government's representative assigned to conduct surveillance and oversight of the service, as well as other government representatives depending on the requirement. For instance, on construction contracts, we might also invite representatives from civil engineering, such as the construction inspector, fire, safety, and security police, so that they can discuss the various processes and procedures for obtaining permits, etc. Pat, before the meeting, we talked a bit about your job as COR, but I'm not clear on what an administrative contracting officer does. Will our service require an ACO? That's a good question, Sergeant Chan. What do you think, Jack? On smaller contracts, especially firm fixed-price contracts locally performed on post, camp, or station, typically, the contracting officer handles both PCO, or procuring contracting officer, and ACO, or administrative contracting officer, responsibilities. Sometimes referred to as cradle-to-grave contracting, I would be the go-to guy for both awarding and administering the contract. For larger contracts, especially cost-type contracts, and contracts performed at a contractor's facility, we often delegate the contract administration responsibilities to the Defense Contract Management Agency, or DCMA, because of their specialized experience and knowledge of larger DOD contractor business relationships, systems, and so on. Delegations to DCMA may also be tailored dependent on circumstances. There are full delegations where complete administration goes to DCMA and, if the requiring activity is very busy with pre-award and needs a hand in completing administrative duties beyond executing a simple modification, then specified administration tasks may be partially delegated according to FAR Subpart 
42.2. DCMA was established to assist with these administration functions to provide consistent oversight on contractual actions, achieve consistency in dealing with industry, and reduce the government's operation costs. I'm glad you brought this up, Sergeant Chan, since our contract is a firm, fixed-price contract for local services and is relatively small, we will likely not need to delegate the contract administration to DCMA. Okay, I think I understand. Thanks for the explanation. Jack, can you talk about the various roles and responsibilities of those attending the post-award conference next week? Sure. As contracting officer, FAR 42.503-1A states I'm responsible for Establishing the time and place of the conference. Preparing the agenda when necessary. Notifying appropriate government representatives, for example, contracting, contract administration office, and the contractor. Designating or acting as the chairperson. Conduct a preliminary meeting of government personnel. And prepare a summary report of the conference. If I were delegating ACO responsibilities to DCMA, I would also be responsible for delegating legal authority for the contract administration to DCMA. The ACO would be responsible for administering the contract and would serve as the point of contact on the contract for the areas delegated under FAR Subpart 42.3. The ACO ensures the contractor complies with the terms and conditions of the contract and approves the contractor's systems. The ACO may also assign qualified personnel as authorized representatives to assist in the technical monitoring or administration of the contract. These personnel include CORs, like PAT, but receive authority from the ACO rather than the PCO in a written delegation letter that identifies limitations of their authority, the time period covered by the designation, and states they may be personally liable for unauthorized acts. Since we're not going to delegate administration to DCMA, I will be handling those duties. Let me add that the COR should make sure the contractor is aware and clear on contractual performance requirements regarding contract oversight and surveillance and the government's right of access to facilities and data. This conference is a prime opportunity to discuss the contract and address any perceived or real issues early on, that is, at award and or prior to performance. It is also a great way to promote good working relationships and to kick off the contract on a positive note. Jack, let me clarify just a bit. For this conference, you will be the chairperson. However, the FAR allows the DCMA ACO if delegated to make the arrangements? Thanks. That's right, Michael. If we were delegating the ACO functions to DCMA, I'd definitely be asking for their assist. As for our conference next week, as chairperson, I'll conduct the meeting and emphasize that the meeting's purpose is not to change the contract's requirements. If during our meeting today we discuss some potential change needed, then of course we can mention that next week while making it absolutely clear to everyone that any change to the contract mentioned during the post-award conference shall be made only by a contract modification referencing applicable terms of the contract. Participants without authority to bind the government shall not take action in any way which alters or changes the contract. The chairperson's responsibility will be to include in a summary report all information and guidance provided to the contractor during the meeting. Okay, Jack. So you'll be in charge of conducting the post-award conference. What's my part? As for your part, Sergeant Chan, I'm looking for you to go over the requirements of the service contract in detail with the contractor especially covering initial submittals, plans, and other deliverables that are required for approval early on, either before or during initial performance. Again, we want to ensure everyone has the same understanding. We can talk specifics more after this meeting if you like. Jack, do we have any templates for the summary report? The DOD FAR supplement discusses the optional use of DD Form 1484, post-award conference record, but since it is not mandated, many organizations have developed their own forms. The DD form is three to four pages in length 
and covers a lot of areas that can be discussed. The important thing is that whatever is used adequately documents all the items discussed during the conference, especially any controversial matters. The form also must include the names of all participants, any issues requiring resolution, and due dates for any required actions. It's also a good idea to have the contracting officer and contractor representative sign the form agreeing to its contents. A copy of the report shall be furnished by the chairperson to the contractor and all participating organizations. Do subcontractors attend the post-award conferences, or is there some procedure specific for them? Good question, Sergeant Chan. The prime contractor is responsible for conducting post-award conferences with their subcontractors. However, the prime contractor may invite government representatives to their conferences with subcontractors, or the government may request that the prime contractor initiate a conference with subcontractors. The prime shall ensure that representatives from involved contract administration offices are invited. When government representatives are participating, they must recognize that subcontractors are only privy to certain information, and other information should not be disclosed. Additionally, action shall not be taken that is inconsistent with or alters subcontracts, and shall ensure that any changes in direction or commitment affecting the prime contract or contractor resulting from a subcontractor conference are made only by written direction of the contracting officer to the prime contractor. Thanks. That's good to know, Jack. I'll be sure to keep that in mind for future reference. This has been a great meeting. I think we all have better understanding of the meeting's purpose and our roles and responsibilities. I agree. Pat, if you or Sergeant Chan have any other questions or concerns, please let me know. And either I or Jack will get back to you. I will also send out post-award conference meeting invitations via Outlook later this afternoon and touch base with you both in the next day or so about pre-populating some of the information on the draft post-award conference form prior to the meeting. Sounds good, Michael. Again, thanks everyone for attending this planning meeting, and I will see you all again next week for the post-award conference. Army Strong! <laughs>